In this tutorial screencast, we're going to look at the SN1 mechanism, which stands for Substitution Nucleophilic Unimolecular. The specific reaction that we're going to look at is the transformation of tert butyl chloride into tert butanol. So here's our starting substrate tert butyl chloride and that's going to be reacted in water with heat and the product of that is going to be tert butanol so overall we know that a substitution is taking place if we look at the starting material, we're starting with tert butyl chloride, in which the chlorine is delta minus and the carbon is delta plus. And we're ending up with tert butanol, where the hydroxyl group is delta minus and the carbon bearing it is delta plus. So overall, this is called a substitution reaction. So we've substituted chlorine for OH. So we, we've started with an alkyl chloride and we're ending up with an alcohol. So how do we know this is an SN1 uh, mechanism? So the first thing to do is, is classify the carbon bearing the leaving group and it is a tertiary alkyl chloride. And that's an important thing to do at, at the beginning so that we know it's SN1. This reaction will not proceed via SN2 because what I'm drawing in here is the antibonding orbital for that carbon-chlorine bond and it's unlikely that our nucleophile, which is water, is going to attack that antibonding orbital due to the steric encumbrance of the three methyl groups on the carbon bearing the leaving group. So what happens in this mechanism? How does the substitution occur? The first step of this mechanism is going to be ionization of the leaving group. So let's draw this out stepwise. I'm going to say step one is ionization. And by putting in the lone pairs from the Lewis dot structure, we can then assign delta minus to the chlorine and delta plus to the carbon. Ionization is the formation of, of ions. And as such, the bond bearing the leaving group is going to be heterolytically cleaved. So what does that mean? The electrons in this bond are going to go on to chlorine. So this is ionization. So chlorine is going to end up with four electron pairs and a negative charge. And carbon is going to end up with a positive charge. And the additional thing that happens to the carbon is that it's rehybridized to sp2 hybridization. So here are our ions. We have chloride anion, and we have a positively charged carbon, which is called a carbocation. A carbocation is sp2 hybridized, and it is a Lewis acid. So remember, a Lewis acid is electron pair acceptor. So this is step one, and overall we know we need to form an alcohol and so our nucleophile which is water is now going to attack the electrophile so step two is nucleophilic attack so let's redraw our carbocation again realizing that it's sp2 hybridized
So it's positively charged. It's a Lewis acid. Our Lewis base is water. The arrow is going to be driven by the lone electron pair. The water can attack either, either lobe of this p orbital. In this case, because we're forming an achiral intermediate, it does not matter which, which lobe it attacks. So once we do this, this sp2, the sp2 hybridized carbon is going to be rehybridized now to sp3. And what you'll note is now that oxygen is bearing a positive charge. So we've conserved the positive charge from carbon. It's now um, bonded to the oxygen. So it's a protonated alcohol, and this is called an oxonium ion. Step three, again, we're looking to form a neutral alcohol. So we have to deprotonate that oxonium ion. And this is an acid-base reaction. So it's most likely that water is going to come and be the base in this acid-base reaction rather than the existing chloride ion that we initially formed. That's due to the leveling effect of water. So we have an abstraction by water acting as the base. So this is a fast step. And we end up with our neutral alcohol. So overall, this has been an example of an SN1 mechanism in which we're starting with a tertiary alkyl chloride. We're reacting with a weak nucleophile, which is water and heat, and we're ending up with a tertiary alcohol. So the, the slow step in this process is the first step, which is ionization, during which happens the leaving group ionizes. The carbon changes from sp3 to sp2 hybridization. The second step is nucleophilic attack by the water, which is the weak nucleophile. And the last step is an acid-base reaction in which the oxonium is deprotonated to give you the final alcohol product.